I needed to get a job. When the opportunity to move abroad came, I knew three things for a fact. I have met people who have told me, Tolu, if I knew this was the kind of job waiting for me here, I wouldn't have made this decision. The US immigration law can be intricate. Your career journey often would not start as high up as you want it to be when you are an immigrant. I used to tell people, as long as this brings food on your table, there's nothing to be ashamed of. If this provides roof over your head and it can help you feed your family, don't allow people make some derogatory remarks because of what you do to fend for yourself and your family. Hello, beautiful people. My name is Tolu Lokwe Michael, and I have close to a decade of experience in cybersecurity. And today, I'm going to be showing you, or telling you rather, how I landed my first cybersecurity job as an immigrant. Now, are you an immigrant still struggling trying to find your footing in your new country of residence then this video is for you a while back i made a video about some of the things that makes life difficult for immigrants especially in america i shared some of my experiences and a few of the things that i did to overcome the particular challenges that i faced in case you've not watched it the link to that video is down below you can quickly check that out for a little bit of context because this video is a sort of follow-up on that particular one now this time around i'll be sharing with you how i landed my first cyber security job as an immigrant in the usa let's start with a little background story i moved to the united states a little over you know a decade from my country nigeria i was already doing okay i was doing well before i left nigeria settled in terms of career in terms of uh, finance like everything i was doing okay however when the opportunity to move abroad came i took it and found myself starting a new chapter of my life in god's own country america now as at the time guys i knew three things for a fact number one america is not nigeria so i would practically be starting from scratch number two there will be adjustments i will need to make to almost every area of my life now number three and in a foreign country for the most part it is every man for himself you know in nigeria i don't know how it is in other parts of africa but i know that in nigeria we have this communal culture we do things together you raise kids together there's the same way i come from that it takes the village to raise a kid or to raise a child so that is my background we do things together but i know very quickly and one of the facts is i know in america or in western country for the most part it's every man for himself after accepting this new reality and sorting my accommodation with the funds that i came into the country with i needed to get a job and talking about accommodation big shout out to Cabo wherever you are you're watching this is my guy till today and even till tomorrow it was the one that took me when i first came into this country now that's out of the way i needed to get a job right you need to get a job correct you're in a new country cool now that brings me to the work permit and the visas now if this is where you are in your journey understand that getting a work permit in america and even most european countries can be a complex process trust me on that but is it worth it in the end definitely yes 100 percent if it's worth it it's worth it okay there are also various type of work visas in america depending on factors such as maybe where you are you know either you're a student or an employer is applying for you your occupation type or specialty and a few other considerations such as marriage fiancé and several other things now most importantly when you are in doubt please talk to an immigration lawyer the u.s immigration law can be intricate so the more accurate the information you have the easier it is for you to navigate and i'm going to plead with you youtube is very good google is very good but sometimes for you to have a clear picture and a clear understanding you might need to talk to an immigration lawyer it might cost you a few bucks maybe 50 bucks 100 bucks to have a consultation depending on the lawyer and their level with my work permit sorted the next challenge was actually getting a job i know you guys will be like yes that's the next thing two things i feel i should mention here is the fact that for the most part your career journey often would not start as high up 
as you want it to be when you are an immigrant that does not count if you came into the country with an employee visa yeah you might start on the high note all right you know from that job but if you came here as an immigrant you're going to have to start from the scratch aside that the economic policy institute report that immigrants are often concentrated in a low wage occupations regardless of their educational background do you guys notice that in nigeria that is where i come from you will hear people mostly in a derogatory manner address people that have come to the us or go to canada or the uk you know addressing them that you you're a phd holder in nigeria you're washing toilets in america you're washing plates in america or you're driving taxi or you're doing cab they say that a lot i have met people who have told me tolu if i knew this was the kind of job waiting for me here i wouldn't have made this decision for me as well there was a time i actually said that like nobody is pursuing me from my country like i'm not owing anybody like would i not go back right and it's not unusual to feel this way okay it's okay as for job qualification as an immigrant let's talk about that you need to be aware that having a degree or another credential from your country does not automatically mean you would have your peak of jobs in a foreign country it doesn't mean that you would have this is what i want this is the job i want and that's what you're gonna get it doesn't work that way this is because credential recognition is a big deal as a matter of fact the world Ec education services popularly known as wes okay they reported that 47 percent of highly skilled immigrants in the u.s are either underemployed or unemployed due to difficulties in transferring their foreign credentials imagine that it will be 47 percent it means that out of 10,000 professionals moving into this country where it says that 4,700 of them they are either underemployed or unemployed and this is because of the difficulties in transferring their foreign credentials as a result of this you have to be open to consistent learning and self-improvement it's very important also while waiting for you know big break waiting for things to happen please don't trivialize the little opportunities you have to make a living don't trivialize that as a matter of fact see let me tell you something i used to tell people as long as this brings food on your table there's nothing to be ashamed of if this provides roof over your head and it can help you feed your family there is absolutely nothing to be ashamed of don't trivialize that and don't allow people make some derogatory remarks because of what you do to fend for yourself and your family in the first video i referred to earlier i talked about how i had to do several jobs at a time a large percentage of immigrants often start with jobs in the factory some will do delivery some will do cleaning jobs and the likes and some will do cna like caregivers and all that we do all that okay i've also done some of these jobs and understand how draining they can be trust me on that the most important thing is to have a goal and work towards achieving it statistics even show that immigrants are nearly twice as likely to start businesses as native-born americans with 25 percent of new entrepreneurs in the u.s being immigrants who knows your experiences right now may just be the drive you need to become an entrepreneur but if these are all the difficulties i faced as an immigrant now the question is how did i land my first cyber security job to start with i was too busy holding down three jobs to fully explore some of the options that might have been available to me at the time but i would say that i was quite fortunate i remember it was after a sunday service when an acquaintance saw how tired i was looking and decided to ask me about my job here let me say a shout out to brother me here brother me wherever you are shout out to you that's my very good brother i explained the challenges i have had and how difficult it was juggling the jobs that i was doing he asked if i'll be interested in starting a career in cybersecurity after explaining a few things to me now after that conversation he became like a mentor to me and he gave me invaluable guidance and i made sure that i started doing my own research about the field i became so to the idea of starting a six-figure career in cybersecurity and began studying on my own 
I set up a lab at my home where I would engage in practical sessions, simulation and capture the flag training exercises. I was doing hack the box. I was doing all sorts of pen testing, you know, in my lab, in my home. Mind you, I was still working as much as I could as an Uber driver at that point in time. And in between trips, what I would do is I would pull out my laptop. I would, you know, watch videos, watch videos, watch videos in between trips. I did this for several months, watching as many YouTube videos as I could find, reading as many books as I could lay my hands on. I bought so many books. That is one of the reasons why I'm so grounded in cybersecurity today, because I've read a lot of books in cybersecurity. Not only that, I paid for so many courses. I went to so many boot camps and just generally soaking in as much knowledge as I could. Now that brings me to the power of preparation. This is very important. In case you didn't know, there's really no such thing as being over prepared. You can never be over prepared. Being an immigrant meant that I had to be ready for opportunities along before they even show up. I had a two part strategy for this. Two part. I made a list of a few organizations I would love to work at and noted some of their hiring requirements. I made sure every time I had a way from my driving job was dedicated to learning something that will give me an edge. Oh boy, I was learning. I was like learning. I started applying to job while learning as much as I could from my mentor and from all the courses that I bought and several other things and my personal study and online practice as well. But before applying, I made sure that I had a superb resume. Now for tips on how to create a winning resume, you can check some of the videos on this channel as well. Also, I need you to remember that your resume is like the key that opens the door to a job opportunity and you have only about seven seconds to capture and keep the recruiter's attention. Take your time to work on your resume while also working on yourself. After you have done having a superb resume, the next thing you have to do is to start preparing for interview. Preparing for interviews meant not just focusing on technical skills, but also understanding cultural nuances. This can be quite different from one country to another, but the best thing to do is ask questions as much as you can from those who have had similar experiences. Please, this is, this is very important. I know a lot of you do not like to ask questions, but you see, at this point, you must be ready to ask questions. Like, no question is stupid. Practicing mock interviews with friends and mentors was also invaluable and helped me gauge my preparedness. I was doing that a lot. And just so you know, you are two and a half times more likely to get a job offer if you prepare with a mock interview than someone who didn't do that. So if you were paying attention, you will notice that I didn't wait to get interviews before I started preparing. You can find more details on how to prepare for interviews and ace them in some of my videos that I've posted here already. So go find them and get to work. Now, I eventually got invited to three job interviews the final stage. This was the final stage. At this point in time, I was already done. I, I think I had done about five or six interviews. So three got to the final stage and I was invited to come to their offices for these interviews. I got the three job offer. I got all of them and I had to pray and even, you know, met my pastor and we, we, we prayed together and I was able to choose the one that you know, God was leading me to choose at that point in time. Was there anything extra that I did? Not really, of course. I would say that was the grace of God, but I made sure that I wasn't lacking on my path as much as I could. So here's my thing to you. I want you to prepare as much as though there is no God and you will not pray. And I want you to pray and trust God as though you will never prepare. And before I say my final note, if you've not subscribed to this channel, please hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, and also uh, share the video to those who may like it as well. Now, on a final note, I would like to say that securing your first job in a new field and in a new country is not without its challenges. As a matter of fact, that's why we're doing this video. But with the right preparation and mindset, it's definitely achievable. I hope my story motivates you to chase your own dreams in cybersecurity or any other field that you're passionate about. If you found this video helpful, please like, share, and subscribe for more insights. Don't forget to drop 
your question or experiences in the comment section. I would love to hear from you. Bye for now and see you on the next one.